Oh, hey. What the f- Yeah, we've all seen this coming. Well, except that. Cuphead, the delicious last chorus. Huh, that's clever. Delicious last chorus, DLC. Well, I wish it gone deliciously immediately extinct. On June 11, 2018, Studio MDHR released a brand new trailer announcing a DLC for Cuphead. No gameplay was shown here, but it did reveal some vital info about the DLC, including a brand new playable character, Miss Chalice was already a character we knew in the game, a new location which means new bosses, weapons, and charms, and they also revealed a new character, Chef Saltbaker, who's totally not the main bad guy in the DLC, and it's announced to be released in 2019. After three more trailers, two announcing a port for the Switch and one for the Mac, we got another teaser trailer detailing the DLC. We only got less than 10 seconds of actual gameplay, okay, and it's now announced to hit on 2022 on all platforms. When this trailer hit, I was a bit worried. The last trailer about the DLC was released a year before, and up until the next DLC trailer was released, there was no new info till that point. And the new trailer didn't show anything at all besides some millisecond of gameplay. I mean, a delay can either go super wrong or not. The original game got announced around 2013, got two more trailers separately at E3 2014 and 2015, and got an announcement trailer in 2017. So given all of that, a few more delays would have been understandable. It just means that the people behind the development of the DLC would have more time. But alas, after nearly two years, was finally released on June 30, 2022 on all platforms. Well that's a cool story, a bunch of delays back and forth, to truly know if the game is worth it, I gotta play it. And given that I have played Cuphead before, <laughs> it shouldn't be that difficult. So once you bought the DLC, you are greeted with a new title screen. Nice diapers. And once you enter your last save file, this guy comes and tells us to meet him on the coast. We meet him there and tells us that Chalice needs our help on an island for a mysterious discovery. So we head there with this cutscene. Uh, don't worry, he's not a bad guy here, he just smiles like that. Gosh, Cuphead, I, I don't know, I hope she's okay. We sure are far from home. So Chalice arrives, gives Mugman a cookie, and they switch places. And looking back at this part, she just killed Mugman. Follow Chalice and she says that she is trying to find a way to escape the astral plane. She introduces us to Chef Saltbaker, the greatest chef in all the lands, totally not the main bad guy here. Apparently the cookie that Mugman ate only has a temporary effect and Chalice returns to the astral plane. The chef, who's totally not the main bad guy, came up with a new recipe that will bring back Chalice to life. And the ingredients we need are held by the most fearsome of foes so we'll be committing homicide. After the cutscene, we are given the astral cookie that allows us to play as Chalice. So this is the new island. If we come to this stand, we get a tutorial for Chalice. Unlike Cuphead and Mugman, Chalice can double jump, dodge roll, has an extra help point, and can parry dash. Basically, if you want this game to have an easy mode or just want to get on with a DLC, just play as Chalice. She also has her own set of unique abilities. Her Super Art 1 is the same as the regular one, but vertically. Super R2 gives you an extra HP, and Super R3 which just spawns a swarm of ghosts and a pink spirit that you can parry. So we head to the first boss of the DLC. The first phase has this big mafia spider. He walks around either from the tree levels while some of his goons shoot part at you. The spider would stop to either spawn a bunch of bombs, call some of his flies, or launch a caterpillar around the room. All of these attacks last a while so they can appear all at the same time. This phase is the hardest here, but it's easy to mess up here. It can get pretty intense sometimes, but it's easy to pick off those flies, and if the bombs appear, just dash in and out close to them to get rid of the bombs. I recommend watching out for those farts since you probably won't even notice them most of the time because they don't appear that often. When transitioning to the second phase, there are these bombs that walk around both at the top and the bottom. Sometimes one of them is pink which means you can parry them. But I wouldn't do that if I really have to. We got this lady that tip tapity dances around while the record players shoot out 6 musical sheets. When it's green it's safe to pass by it but when it turns yellow and red, it's best to avoid it immediately. 
Be warned about these guys since if you run away from the red laser beams, you might run into them. Also, sometimes the bombs from earlier can appear here so also be on the lookout for them. When the lady does her defeat animation, you can get hit if she does that. I restarted so many times because of this, it's pretty annoying that you can get hit by this. Then we enter the final phase where we will be fighting a giant anteater. Once it does this animation, you can hit the snail to get a couple of hits in. This phase is pretty tricky. You can tell from which side the anteater is about to attack, but you can't tell exactly where it will be attacking. It can attack from the top, the middle, or the bottom. Most of the time, it will fake out its attack where it uses its tongue to grab a bunch of flies, which then becomes a new projectile that bounces around, making it harder to dodge any incoming attack. The only way to deal damage is if you hit its mouth. It's easy to get hit here because you might accidentally get hit immediately by its mouth, which is the only place where you can deal damage. They could have just made the entire anteater exposable so that you can hit the anteater and just make the anteater's health bigger so that the fight will last longer. So after that, we beat the boss. Oh, uh, never mind, there's another. Uh, okay, after we beat the first boss, we gain access to this area where we fight the next boss a literal cowboy. <laughs> This is the first DLC boss where you fight in a plane. In the first phase, there are multiple things to be on the lookout. You got the boss's main attack where he shoots a snake oil that comes back in the same direction they were shot. Sometimes the cowboy pulls out a cactus either from the top or the bottom. There are these birds that throw dynamite and when it explodes, it lets out multiple dynamites as well. There are also these flying horses that appear either above or below where they shoot out a cactus ball before they leave the screen. This phase isn't too hard, you just have to be on the lookout for the projectiles since there are so many of them. In the second phase, he lets out the vacuum that sucks stuff coming off screen. Afterwards, he shoots out bolts that when they hit the ground, they shoot out gold and money. Like the last phase, you just have to be on the lookout for the projectiles. It's easy to dodge them if you know what you're doing, and I would recommend parrying the pink or gold since it's pretty easy to parry them. Then, in the next phase, he gets sucked by his own vacuum and becomes a living sausage. This phase might be the hardest one in this fight in my opinion. The meat he shoots out can be hard to dodge, especially with these flying cans of beans that take up a lot of space. The best thing to do here is to not panic. Finally, in the last phase, he becomes a can of sausages, and he lets out a row of sausages that float up and down in a sideways V-shape where there are these gaps in between where you can dodge the attack. While this is happening, a bunch of jalapenos are spread throughout the area. This phase is tricky, you just gotta focus on the gaps between the sausages to avoid them, as well as the flying jalapenos. Overall, a pretty solid boss fight, just not the hardest one. Beating this boss unlocks a new area where we fight a bunch of furries, the worst monsters out there. Before we do that, there's this old ghost who's on a mystery. Apparently, he said that there must be an order or method to access the astral plane in this graveyard here. And we'll come back to that soon, because right now we gotta deal with- So here's the first phase. We got this bulldog that either grabs a cat and it shoots out 3 yarn balls, or he shoots out 3 bones that are coming out of his tattoo. Uh, don't even mention how he does that. There are prompts to determine which attack he'll be doing. It's easy to dodge your bones, but when it comes to the yarn balls, if you're playing as Chalice, double jump and dash towards the direction they were shot from. It's easy to dodge these if you're playing as Chalice. You also got these little guys that throw tennis balls. There are also fire hydrants that chase you around. With the fact that you have to move left and right to get the plane to tilt around, it can get pretty hard to dodge if all of these attacks happen all at once. Also take note that you can fall out of the plane and get hit, so you don't have a lot of room to move around and not get hit. In the next phase, 4 dogs and jetpacks fly around you in circles shooting letters at you. It's easy to dodge the projectiles and overall this entire phase is the easiest here, but you just gotta time your jumps properly when you're trying to avoid your projectiles. Once you made it to the final phase, you just gotta avoid the lasers, pretty standard stuff. Then this happens. It's a good thing I'm using a laptop. So this part you're going to be really careful about. Since the screen is tilted, your controls change as well. There are only two attacks here. The lasers from earlier only appears when the screen is normal, and the dog balls. Red means that they fly at the ground level, so you have to jump, and the yellow flies above you. The only way you lose here is if you messed up. This entire phase is pretty confusing, but after a few attempts, it, it can get pretty easy to understand the entire phase, but it's still easy to mess up. 
beating this boss unlocks a new area where we fight the Ice King. The first phase is pretty easy. The boss floats around at the top, which makes it pretty easy to deal some hits. He would spawn in a bunch of icicle clones, shoot out a bunch of cards, and smack you with a whale. The next phase is a bit difficult. He becomes a giant snowman, and after he transforms, he'll roll up to you and there are two variations of this attack. Either he rolls normally or jumps at you. And then he would become a giant refrigerator that shoots out ice cubes that when they hit the ground, they spawn in more ice cubes. The refrigerator also lets out flying popsicles, and they can get pretty hard to dodge especially when the snowman is readying another attack. It's where the popsicles just appear while you're trying to dodge away from the snowman, and it's annoying. The snowman also has this one attack where he smacks the ground, a bunch of swords appear one by one. Finally, when you reach the final phase, the snowman becomes a giant floating snowflake, and there are these platforms that float around in circles. The giant snowflake would move from the opposite side whenever it feels like it, this guy's got multiple attacks. First is this eyeball that shoots lasers vertically, second are these ice beams, and lastly there are these buckets that split into three moon projectiles. This fight isn't the hardest, but it's easy to mess up here. Overall, not the hardest boss fight yet. Beating this boss unlocks another way to the gnome giant. There's a ton of stuff here in the first phase. There are five platforms here that go up and down. You can go down to where the gnomes are, but most of the time, if you do, you might get hit by them. Normally, the gnomes throw fireballs at you, which are pretty easy to dodge. The gnome giant would open its mouth and the cauldron inside would launch a bunch of clouds at you. It would also grab a bear towards him, which is pretty easy to avoid. It gives you less room to avoid projectiles. Then, in the second phase, he grabs two dolls that shoot out projectiles aimed at you. This phase is pretty easy overall, but then we get to the final phase. The giant ate us and now we're inside his stomach. We just get to shoot upwards while also avoiding any attacks and the disappearing platforms. If you parry one of the skulls' tongues, the platforms restart and they all appear once again. And you have to do this constantly while also avoid incoming attacks. This phase isn't the hardest, but it's easy to mess up here. There's not enough room to double jump. Most of the time, you might accidentally get hit by the boss or fall into the acid pool. Overall, it's not that difficult. So, we murdered all of them and got our ingredients, now it's time to give these to the chef, who's totally not the main bad guy in this game. Okay, this is new. We must have let this open. Oh, who would have seen this coming? So he basically sent us to murder an entire mafia, Clint Eastwood, a bunch of furries, purple PJs, and a giant gnome just to help him in his evil plan, and now he trapped Cuphead inside a jar. It's a chef, he can't be that hard to beat. I swear, this damn cook put up more of a fight than the devil. The devil. So in the first phase, he does a lot of attacks. Firstly, there's this fireball that goes up and down that follows you where you are. This attack's not much of a deal, but it can be annoying at times. Secondly, there are these slimes that spin around the area. They're pretty annoying, but they're easy to avoid if you're really being cautious. Third, there are these sugar cubes that float up and down. They're also annoying, but I would recommend trying to parry the pick ones. You'll have less time worrying about avoiding any other incoming attacks if you do. Lastly, there are these biscuits in the form of animals that jump around. It's easy to accidentally get hit by them, but if you use the spread attack, they won't be much of a problem. Every time you restart the fight, the chef starts with either of the two attacks, the spinning limes or the sugar cubes. This phase is the longest here, which means this phase might be the hardest yet. If you want to beat the boss, you might need to use the super art that gives you an extra hit point. Trust me when I say that this is really useful. It's easy to mess up in this entire boss fight, so you might need to use the super art. If you're going to do that, you just need to save your super meter in the latter half of the first phase. It might take a while, so be very patient. In the next phase, there are four pepper shakers. You need to deal enough damage for the pepper shaker to attack the chef. This is the only way you can damage the chef in this phase. The pepper shaker sneeze out peppercorns, some of which can be parried. You also need to look out for this flaming guy. He jumps around to where you are so be careful. Be aware of the falling leaves. If this happens, it might get difficult to avoid any attack. Overall, not the hardest phase, but still easy to screw up. In the third phase, the chef is destroyed and he sends out a clone that jumps around the screen. The clone is pretty big and has a white hitbox, so whenever it is close to you, just dash out of the way. And also be aware of this little saw in the ground. 
His face is short, but you have to be really careful not to dash into the clone since that might happen by mistake. Finally, we're in the last phase. The chef turns into two salt tornadoes and his heart bounces around the area. Now in this phase, you have to be extra careful. There's very little area here and it's easy to get hit by anything. The platforms fall downward so you have to jump constantly. Because of all this, you can get hit by the floating heart since it moves up and down and left and right. So here's my strategy, just wait for the heart to float at the top. By then you can deal some hits because it's pretty difficult to hit it if it's down here. While you're doing this, you need to jump to get to the other platforms. So you just gotta aimlessly point your gun at the top and just look at the bottom to jump to the other platforms. If the heart moves at the bottom, just try to get to the top to not get hit. You might need to parry the heart if you need to. By the way, when you parry the heart, it cannot take damage for a few seconds, so be patient. Before this phase, I advise that you need to save up a full super meter in case you lose the extra hit point. This entire boss fight is the hardest boss fight in the entire game. As I said earlier, this chef put up more of a fight than the freaking devil. In comparison between these two fights, I'd say the chef is easily a better boss. This doesn't mean the devil boss fight isn't that hard, no. I also spend a lot of time beating that guy. It's just that I spent more time trying to beat this guy than him. But the devil's boss fight feels like the final boss. He spent hours beating up everyone to beat up the devil, and that felt rewarding. With how short of time you need to beat the main quest of the DLC, the chef's boss fight doesn't feel as rewarding as the devil's, but this fight is still rewarding nonetheless. I feel like there's a lot of variety here in the boss fight when it comes to the attacks, especially in the first phase, all of the attacks are very different and vibrant colors. That's pretty much all the good stuff I have to say about this guy, I freaking hate this chef. The bakery collapses, the chef goes to court, where he is sentenced to do community service. What? He deserves to be in hell. I had to spend 3 hours just trying to beat this guy. He deserves first than community service. Oh, and now look, he rebuilt the bakery and threw a feast. He's going to poison everyone in this town. Wait, who's that guy? Ah, shit, the game's not over. This is the king's sleep. This guy here is the king, and he has a bunch of challenges for us. So how these challenges work is that you can't use your weapons or your charms. Instead, you have to parry to deal some damage. Don't worry, these bosses aren't the hardest, but they aren't the easiest as well. It'll take some time to learn the bosses since they all function differently. So let's go through all of them. First, we have these pawns. We just have to parry their heads and then move on. Do note that the parry pawns can still run around so you have to avoid them. Second, we have this knight. Probably the second hardest boss in the king's sleep, but it's not that difficult at all. You just gotta be patient for him to be vulnerable, and you have to learn his move so you can telegraph what he's about to do. You can parry him twice, maybe even three times if you do it immediately after he does a move and if you time it properly. Next, we got this bishop whose heads float around. You must blow out the lit candles by going through them so that you can parry the bishop. If the bishop's heads disappear, don't stay near to the middle. And there are also these bells that float around the area. They're not much of an issue, but they can be pretty annoying. Next, we have this executioner. He spawns a bunch of pink heads, skulls, and sparks. You need to parry the pink heads constantly so that they can hit the executioner. In this entire fight, you just have to be patient. It can be difficult to parry the pink heads since you'll risk getting close to the executioner, but overall, it's not that hard. Finally, we have the queen. You have to parry the pink sparks on these cannons. They aim around a lot so you have to time your parries properly. You also gotta react very quickly when she spawns in these pink statues. They're pretty fast and they spawn real quick, so parry them as fast as you can. She also throws a bunch of trinkets that spread around the area. They're pretty hard to avoid, so be on the lookout for them. Sometimes when you parry the cannon and it shoots, it avoids the queen, which is pretty annoying. But the fight isn't that long, and that's pretty much about it for the king's sleep. After every boss, you are rewarded with 2 coins. When you beat the queen though, you get 3 coins. After you beat the entirety of the king's sleep, it now becomes a training ground. But is the game over? Not yet. We still got one more mystery, and that is the graveyard. So if you talk to the old ghost, he says that there must be a pattern that can unlock something in the graveyard. To get your clues, you need to talk to the winners on the podium next to the place where you fought the giant gnome. The clues are randomized for every, so you need to deduct very carefully what the winners say. For example, if you talk to the winner in the first place, they'll give you a hint and you'll have to use that hint to find the first tombstone that you'll have to interact with. 
and you'd have to do that with the second and third place winners. You're gonna spend a lot of time trying to figure out these clues. There's not much I can help with here since it's randomized for everyone, so just take your time trying to find out the pattern. Once you find out the pattern, the middle tombstone lights up and all you need to do is to take a nap. I wonder what's gonna happen. You? Why are you here? So we're fighting both the angel and the demon. This boss fight is short but it's still quite difficult. The demon will always face the player while the angel will always be behind you. That just gave a whole new meaning. The angel's attacks don't do anything but when the two switch sides, the angel's attacks turn into the demon's attacks which deal damage. There's also this cloud that shoots lightning at the bottom. The cloud isn't much of a problem, it can actually help you get out of sticky situations if you plan it carefully. The demon shoots fireballs and a wall of fire. The only way you can dodge the wall of fire is if you look at the opposite side so that the walls turn into water. Another way you can dodge the wall is if you equip the charm that allows you to dodge through the attacks. But if you equip this charm, you, you can play as Chalice. And I recommend that you do this. You can beat this fight as Chalice, but I think it's easier if you do this instead. I recommend you use the crack shot so that you don't have to worry about not aiming at the demon. And if you do all that, you beat the boss. Like I said multiple times in the past, a chef took a lot longer to beat than the demon. And that's about it for the DLC. Honestly, I was expecting a bit more. It's a pretty short expansion if you look back at it. It only has bosses, no run gun levels or anything. And it's pretty weird because while Cuphead is known for its notorious bosses, the run and gun levels are quite challenging as well and it's bizarre that there's none of that here. The bosses though are great, there may not be a ton of them here, but all of them leave a great impression. They're all pretty unique and that's what makes them quite memorable. The King's Deep is also a nice little bonus, a bunch of short mini bosses that reward you with a bunch of coins, I'm guessing this is their replacement for the run and gun stages. They're short and not that challenging, but it was a fun time. I just wish there was a bit more. And the hidden boss fight, the angel and the demon, it was a bit underwhelming. The damn puzzle took me longer to beat than the actual fight itself. It's nice that the devil returned but the fight itself wasn't that difficult. It's not easy as well, no, but I expected it to be very difficult. So that's the entirety of Cuphead. I can't say it's the hardest game of all time, but it sure gave me a migraine. So I hope I no longer return to this game for some stupid reason like completing this game 100%. You know what? I think I might do that. You know what? No. Please, I think I might be. Please, oh god, my presence is such an idiot. Uh, there's only one way to prevent this. Uh, what is it now? Yeah! Listen, this is important. Oh, it's you. Look, I've told you for the last time to stop giving me Burger King onion rings. I had them every day for nearly a year. My present self wants to play Cuphead and complete it 100%. And you know what happens if it does. So you called me to save a different version of you. Why would I do that? Um, well, what do you want? Other than the Burger King onion rings, that is. <laughs>